metabolic stability. We want to go back to squats because I think squatting is such a fundamental thing we all want people to do, yet it can be one of the most challenging things to have people to do well and build that success. We need to build wins early with our clients and we're going to get them excited about training with us. So having an understanding of how the body works and how to get people to move better is really going to benefit both your client and your training business. What we're going to do is we're going to focus really on three different elements. Where do we start the with from? How do we create tension to create stability? And then how do we use different functional fitness tools to give feedback to people upon how to squat properly? I've gone around the world trying to teach people these ideas because they're so simple and they can be so transformative. So we're going to focus first on the idea of tension and why we're doing what we're doing. First off, when a lot of you get, and you ask people to do a bodyweight squat, and you get something that looks like this, we definitely, we generally go and go, oh man, you got all this mobility problems, you got, you know, we got stretch this, we got mobilize that. While definitely there could be a benefit for doing mobility work, a lot of it is just a lack of body awareness and how to use the body structure to our advantage. When you give people some very specific uh, tips, it's amazing how that transforms because remember, the way that our body reacts to feeling unstable is to go into flexion. That's why when you see people very early on in a lift, They'll bend their elbows too early. They'll shrug their shoulders, they'll shoot their head, they'll flex their trunk. Those are all elements of flexion. Now, it makes sense because if we feel unstable, it would make sense to expose our body and create more extension. That would make our body more prone to injury. So how do we get people out of these elements? Well, one of the first things we got to do is get people to understand where the squat begins from. So for a lot of people, I ask coaches, where, where does the squat begin? They'll say either knees or hips. It's neither one. And if you get this other little fundamental concept, you can really transform people's squats. It begins with the feet. If you don't get people to engage their feet, they don't have a stable foundation to work from, that's where you see a lot of these collapses, whether it be from the knees or flexing the trunk forward. I'll give you a little example. So generally I tell people to take a hip width stance and then take one step out. For a lot of people, that's going to be about their squat stance. If they need to adjust that slightly, that's fine, but that's going to fit most of your people. We turn the feet out slightly, just so we don't have the head of the feet jamming into the pelvis. It just gives people more freedom of movement. Now, if I were to start trying to bend from the knees, you see generally that the knees fall, collapse in, and I flex forward. So a lot of people go, well, that's the knee out we got to strengthen the glutes, we got to do this and that. Well, the problem is, if you understand things like the concept of great good, my quote talk about in the joint by joint, if I don't have a stable foundational foundation with my feet, there's no way that my knees can have that stability. Watch, if I just try to grab the ground, this is why I'm barefoot, grab the ground with my feet, like they were my hands, all of a sudden you notice that my knees turn slightly out. So even in this position, just standing here, if I want to try to bring my knees in, and I'm gripping the ground, I really can't. That's why making sure that people are in proper shoe wear when they squat is really important. If you can't go barefoot in your facility, having a minimum shoe is really important because people need to feel the ground. A lot of you probably trying this are so detached from feeling your feet, you can't really get that sensation, so try this barefoot. So when I grab the ground, that sets my pelvis in position. But how do you get your clients that maybe don't have that feeling being able to transition to understand what you want? So I really have fallen in love with the um, Perform Better XL Orange minivans. They're great tools that you can use, and simply you can go ahead and just put them around the middle point of your feet, like so. Now I have feedback. I can create tension, and I have to grip the ground. If I lose tension, it pulls my feet in. But if I grab the ground, I have that nice tension. So again, I start to understand where I want to move from. I have that strong foundation. My glutes are already engaged. Remember, your glutes don't all of a sudden just turn on magically. They're a byproduct of the connection of the body from your foot because we're mostly designed to walk, run, and so forth. We're designed for both emotions. So right here, I can prevent a lot of collapse of these as long as my feet stay engaged. If my feet start to lose it, then you notice my knees start to lose it as well. So there's a great tip right off the bat. Now, from there, we do want people to push out with their knees. All right. The reason being is because we want to make space for our pelvis to come down. That accentuates the glute activation of the lift. So what we want to do first is make sure people understand how to activate that lower body tension. Now, the nice thing is about if I can combine the bands is I don't have people like continuing to plie squat, right? I don't want them to keep turning their feet out. I want them to keep that position. So I'm generally going to use a heavier band for higher up on the body. 
So I can place this either above or below my knees. For right now, I'm going to place it below, like so. And the extra large knee mats give me a little more room. And then I can use the smaller ones for my feet. That wasn't the most graceful way of doing that, but you get the idea of what I'm trying to do. So right now, if I just have tension here, the tension is creating stability up my entire chain. I can really feel those boots engaged. So if I grab the ground with my feet and I push out, already I'm starting to understand where I need to be in that squat. If I lose tension in those bands, then I start to immediately gain feedback of what I'm not doing. So I'm giving kinesthetic cues to my client, and that tension will instantly allow me to move better. It goes back to the little, sort of the proximal stability, distal mobility idea, but that works for different segments of the body, not just the spine. So what we're going to do in a moment is we're going to combine these elements with an actual load because we have to adjust what we're doing for the upper body as well. All right, so we built some of the lower body tension. We need upper body tension too. A big mistake a lot of coaches make is they assume we're not going to give load to our client until they master their body weight. Now, if we're under the assumption we're using load to challenge the movement pattern, that would make sense. However, we're going to use load to help give feedback to the movement pattern. So we're going to use our press out squat from our DRT system. Now I realize you can press out a variety of implements, but I'm going to go over why we use the ultimate sandbag because of the nature of the back. Now, before we do that, let's again verify what, or understand why we're using tension in the upper body. Well, if you understand the, the kinetic chain of the body, you'll understand that the lats and glutes are connected through the core. They work when we're walking, you know, as we walk from opposites, to create stability in the spine. So we want to create that tension through the lat and core to help our lower body. That's creating some of that proximal stability, that distal mobility. So whenever we want that connection made, that's why I use connection sometimes to have core stability, because people don't, it's vague for a lot of people what core stability actually means. We're actually building a lot of those intrinsic core muscles. Now, so to activate the last, what I have to do is position the load correctly. A lot of people, and why, one reason we use open sandbag is because of grip. I can actually pull the bag apart. A lot of times if I'm holding a dumbbell or even a smaller kettle, my hands are too close in, I can't get that tension that I want to create tension in the lats. For those of you in the kettlebell world, you know that when you do a kettlebell swing, the first thing you do is try to break the handle, that creates lat engagement. Why do you want lat engagement? It helps me to that plank during the swing. For those of you that are going to do barbell deadlifts, one of the first things you do when you grab the bar is to try to break the bar. You try to engage that lat to again reinforce that spinal stability. So it makes sense in the squat, we want to try to create that similar effect. Also, you're going to get a side benefit of getting a shoulder stability exercise because grip is related to the rotator cuff. So we're going to create that tension first. Now, I want a 90 degree angle of my elbow. A lot of people get in trouble, and this is why a lot of the other implements that work, because when it feels heavy in the hands, they come up high on the body. So when I go out and I press out, people start to shrug the movement, and they don't get that lat engagement, that core engagement that we want from the exercise. So yes, we're getting a counterbalance from the lift, from the actual load, but more importantly, what a lot of your clients will feel is that core engagement helping out the movement. They'll feel strong, they'll feel stable in the exercise, that tension. So something I want to look for is as I'm pressing out, I want to see the crease of my elbow coming up uh, as I finish the lift. And you want to time it, you want to go slowly so that you finish the press out at the bottom of your lift. Remember, you're using the press out to assist range of motion. So I'm going to grab a power ultimate sandbag here. For lighter clients, 10 to 15 pounds is going to be fine. For more advanced people, 25 to 35 pounds. Now, if you are more advanced, this may not be your squat, maybe your core exercise for some of your clients, it may be their squat. I'm going to grab the middle of the ultimate sandbag. And then I'm going to try to rip it apart. When I do so, it will have my shoulders. They come in nice and tight. I'm at that 90 degree now. I'm gripping with my feet. I'm going to push out against the band as I squat and pull the way back in. For big 6'3", that's not so bad, right? So again, tension. I want to be about my belly button. Drive as I push and grab with my feet. And then I push with my feet and pull the weight back in at the same time. That becomes a great exercise where I get a nice vertical line in my torso. I don't have a load in my lumbar spine. I have that core stability and building hip mobility at the same time. So not only am I building stronger legs, I'm actually building more resilient fat and better overall mobility. And that's why these exercises can be so powerful for more than just building a bigger squat. 
And this will also help you if you are trying to make a transition from suspension straps to more free weight, you'll notice that generally there's a gap. So the gap is obviously they don't have the assistance. The tension that we create is the assistance they need to get to more complex squat exercises.